is Catherine Sanders. I'm a psychologist and a family therapist. That means I work with children and families who want their lives to be safer and happier and who want to get on better with each other. Now that we are all socially distancing and in our own homes, life can be very difficult for some families and particularly difficult for some children. And today I want to talk about brothers and sisters, what we call our siblings. Brothers and sisters are a particularly important group of people. They're the people that we have the longest relationship with ever in our whole lives. Even if we don't see them when we're grown ups, they're people who help us become the grown ups that we're going to be, who help us learn how to get on with other people, agree with other people, disagree with other people, fight with other people, make up with other people, because they're people who are more or less on our own level. Not like adults who are right up here, our siblings are like this. You might be the oldest or you might be the youngest, but the gap between you and the others is not like the gap between you and your parents or the gap between you and your grandparents. So these are very important people in our lives. And just because we're a brother or a sister doesn't mean we find our brother or sister easy to get on with. If you're lucky, your brother or sister might be your very best friend, but some people tell me they find their brothers and sisters really irritating. And when you're stuck together, they can be even more irritating. So what are you going to do about it? You can spend your whole time hiding. Now, if someone is hurting you or is violent towards you, not being in their space is a really good idea. And if that's happening, you do need to tell an adult to, and someone who can protect you. But what if your brother or sister is just a bit irritating? They annoy you, they sniff, they want to borrow your stuff. Worse still, they want to spend time with you because if you're older, they think you're just amazing. How are you going to handle that? Well, I've got some ideas and they might be useful to you. I think the first thing is you generally do better with someone if you don't always say no. If you're always telling someone that you don't want to play with them and you don't like them and you think they're stupid, it's going to get worse between you, not better. So my first bit of advice is try and work out something just a something, a small something that you might like about that person or that would allow you to spend time with them. Think about whether there's something they know or something they can do that you would like to do a bit more of, that you'd maybe like to learn about. And what would happen if you went to that person and you said, I notice you're really good at drawing. Will you show me how to do it? Now, that would be a really surprising thing if that person happened to be younger than you. And you might find it makes a real difference to that relationship. Equally, if they're always annoying you because they think you're so fabulous and they just want to spend time with you, you might want to decide that you will spend a certain amount of time that you will offer them, that you will say to them, I know you really love playing board games, so how about we play it at this time? And after that, then I need my time. Now, it might feel like you're giving in, but in fact, when you set the rules, like when we play and when we don't play, you're actually more in charge. And when you're more in charge, you can probably be a better person to that person. You might also think about doing something as brothers and sisters, or a brother and sister, or a sister and sister, or a brother and brother, for some other people in your family. You might decide on a joint project. You might know that mum and dad would really like a garden bed down the backyard. It's probably worth checking before you go and dig anything up. But what would happen if together you planned it? You decide you're going to dig it up, you're going to find some plants in the garden, or maybe you've got some in a cupboard somewhere, or you might find a way of digging some up someplace and moving to another so that you can look at making a garden. Or you might know that mum's sick of cooking dinner. And if you're old enough and it's safe and it's okay with mum, the kids might decide they're going to make dinner. 
for mum that night. Sometimes it's easier to get on with someone when you're doing something away from you, something that you're agreeing about to make happen. You could probably think of lots of other ideas, but when we're stuck together, it's always more pleasant if we can find a way of getting on and being cooperative than carrying on the fights. So I hope this has been useful and that you might have some other ideas that can make your time as you shut away from your friends, you're bored with your computer and you really don't want to fight anymore, you can make it a bit better. See ya.